Good morning. I'm on my way to work. And uh, I woke up this morning thinking about some things. I guess you would say some old thinking habits, I guess. And uh, that that verse in the Bible that says that my mother and my father may fail me, but my God, you will never forsake me. You'll never, you know. Everything else will fail you except for God. And I was thinking about you know my parents are older now and when I was growing up I never imagined them to be old you know I just it just doesn't cross your mind I mean at some point I'm sure it does but in general you just you look up to your parents whether they're whether they're healthy for you or not whether they're abusive whether they're loving you know whatever it is it doesn't matter because God created us for love he created us to worship and he gave us the free will to worship whatever we want to worship um, but we were designed for worship and he gave us two parents. He gave us a male and a female to conceive us. But he ultimately created us. He created us in his mind. In his image. To be like him. And he just used this, this flesh to cover us. It's actually a protectant. Our flesh is a covering created also by God. So, I started thinking about how I was, you know, when I looked up to my parents and which one of them influenced me. Well, they both influenced me, obviously, but... Um, I guess you'd say I was I was thinking about how we just look up to our parents and in some ways I wanted to be like my mom but in a bigger way I wanted to be like my dad okay not that I wanted to be a male I didn't want to be a different gender I wanted to be like him I wanted to um, what I saw in my dad, okay? What I saw in him was strength, endurance, kindness, compassion, forgiveness, oh, lots of forgiveness, patience, slow to anger. I Like I said, I've, I really hardly ever saw him get angry until he got older. And, uh, mom, I, I wanted to be more like her because she seemed to enjoy life no matter what, okay? To the extent that, you know, some things that should have bothered her or disturbed her did not. And so, you know, we all have our faults and our shortcomings, okay? But God only sees the goodness in us because He's the one who is good and He created us. So, when you're fumbling around in your mind, about 
who or what to be like. It's very important also, there's many, many reasons why we need to know that God loves us and that God created us for himself. Not for the world to take over us, not for the stress to drown us out, not for us to worship other things and other people that cannot save us, that cannot fulfill our emotional and spiritual needs. He created us so that He would be the one. So it's important that we know that. And I know some people are just really numb when it comes to talking about God and God being loving and forgiving and oh he created us and, and and you know it sounds kind of repetitive sometimes oh God loves you oh God loves you but it's not it's not supposed to be repetitive it's supposed to be something that is reminded to us something you know I don't know why some people don't take it well, but honestly, when someone reminds me, when someone reminds me personally that God loves me, like the Billy Joel song, I absolutely love the Billy Joel song, Just the Way You Are, um, because that that song came to me as the words from God at, at a certain point in my life that song God used that song to speak to me right to my soul and it doesn't offend me and it doesn't sound religious to me when someone reminds me it's usually a believer that does that though by the way Okay, people that do not focus or worship God in spirit are most likely not going to be the ones that remind you that God loves you and they just won't. <laughs> okay, they just won't do that. Um, but I'm telling you, it is a good it is good when I get reminded by a believer that everything's going to be okay because God has the plan. I don't have to. I just have to continue in putting my faith in Him that He loves me and that He's going to care for me and I don't have to be like my mom or be like my dad. I can be me, the one that God created for his purpose. And I don't know what that is always, okay? We just don't know. We have to trust him that he's the one that is building us up. He is preparing us. He is teaching us and guiding us. Okay, God doesn't normally just tell me what to do, okay? He's not like a big boss man, like, okay, do this, do that, okay? He is a loving father. Unlike probably any father that I could imagine. Because there's probably not one. There's probably not one earthly father that is 100% the image of God. Like acting out all the time because we're human. So, so that's why I believe the Bible says that even though my mother and my father will fail me, 
my God will never forsake me. Because not, not that they're going to on purpose, like, fail you. They don't on purpose fail you. We're you're human and our parents make mistakes. I'm a parent and I make mistakes. That doesn't mean that I don't love my children and it doesn't mean that I don't want the best for them, but I'm still not perfect and I'm still not 100% all the time. So it shouldn't be offensive to read that verse. It's just a humbling thought to admit, you know, to admit it to yourself. Okay, my mother, my father cannot fulfill all my needs, but God will never forsake me. God will never leave me without my needs being provided for. God will never do that. He's always, always preparing a place. He has everything that we need is always within our reach okay I have tested that out <laughs> sometimes not on purpose but um, I have found that out okay um, it's comforting it can be scary when you actually feel like you don't know what's gonna happen next and I think that's why I was thinking about this this morning because my mom has passed my dad is older than I've ever known him to be because he's never been old before to me so the reality is setting in that I'm not going to have him the rest of my life as far as you know as assuming you know and putting my faith in that tomorrow will come and I'm going to also grow old, you know, considering all that, putting my faith in that, that I'm going to live my full, the fullness of the life that God's planned for me. Because we don't know, we don't know about tomorrow. But, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah that's why I was thinking about that this morning it's like you know what what else can I go through and adjust to okay how much can I change how much can I adapt to the things that keep happening to us seem to be out of control you know and it's not it's not new. I mean, things have always been out of our control. You know, it's not it's not like we can control everything, but it seems to be happening. I am seeing with other people and in my life where it's just bizarre things just keep happening. Whether it's good, bad, whatever, it seems to be you know, I hear people and even myself, it's like I'm having trouble focusing. I don't know what's, you know, what's going to happen. You know, it. it's okay. It's going to be okay. But we have to, what I'm reminding myself of this morning is that by... What always brings me back to stability and balance is when I remember that I'm not the one that has a plan. And it may take me weeks. I may go through weeks and, and feel this weight of things on my shoulder that I cannot control or I cannot fix. And I have to give it a rest and say, look, you know what? Just remember that God is in control. Not that we don't have responsibilities. Not that 
we don't have to do anything because he's driving. You know, we still have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and to take care of others when we can. And we're, we're not designed to be like anyone except for God. It's not a weird thing. It's it's made we're made that way. So I realized this morning that all my life I've actually looked up to my parents way too much. Because now the reality is setting in that they're not going to be here forever. And so then who am I going to be like? Who am I going to confide in when I can't talk to just anybody? I ha it has to be my parents. <laughs> okay? My parents, both of them in their own little way, became my best friends because I could talk to them about things that I wouldn't talk to other people about. Because I trusted them with my thoughts and my feelings and my emotions. Most of the time. Not all the time. Like I said, they weren't perfect. They're not perfect. But that's the way it was for me. And and so, in a way, that is a type of worshiping. And we're not designed to worship other people. We're designed to worship God. And it's not a religious funky thing either because if I'm worshiping my parents by let's just say worship means worship is a type of focus, okay? Something that you are following. Something that you admire. That you're admiring and, you know, actually an image that, you know, that really appeals to me. I would like to be more like that. That's worshiping to me. Let's just say that. So if I'm worshiping my parents and God says you will have no other God before me, well, my focus is off right there. Right away. My focus is off of God. Okay, so my balance is off. My my emotions are off my endurance is going to be off and we all know we have this common sense that if if you're using a tool or maybe even a vehicle if you're using something like, let's say you're using a two-wheel dolly to try to move a pickup truck. Okay? That, it may work at some point if you struggle enough and you tie up enough and you, you know, you do enough for it. It may work somehow. But it's not designed. The two-wheel dolly is not designed to move a pickup truck. It's designed for smaller moving of objects and stuff. So it's the same way I, I believe is with worshiping. If you're worshiping the wrong thing, it may work. You know, you can get by, but it's going to be off. It's going to be struggle. It's going to be uh, frustrating. It's going to be confusing. And it's because it's not, we're not designed to worship other things. It's not like you're being corrected and saying, oh, you and I have no other God before me. It's it's just the truth. You can't have any other God before God because He is the only God and He is the one who created you. So there was nothing before Him. Was Your, your parents weren't even before God. So, our parents can become like gods to us. And it's okay 
to just be who you are. You don't have to be like them. You can admire certain things. You can learn certain things from them. But it's okay not to worship them. Some parents are very, very um, denom dom dominating. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Some parents are pretty dominating. And, and they do treat their kids as if they should worship them. But that's not going to be healthy for either people because if something happens to the kid, then who's the parent going to have as the admirer? You know, it works both ways. Your, your parents can't worship you and you're, you shouldn't be worshiping your parents. If you are focused on God and seeing that He is loving and kind and gives you the free will to do what you want, even if it's destructive. He loves you and He will save you. He's already saved you. Actually, your, set, your soul's already been set on saved. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready to say, okay, God, um, I'm going to trust that you have done this for me. Okay, let's put it that way. And we all need reminded, you know, even if we put, even if our faith is so strong and we believe God, we love God so much and we feel so close to him, we believe in everything that he's done for us. We still need reminded that he is with us. And I think that's what I needed to remind myself of today is not focusing so much on my disappointments. I've disappointed myself. I might have disappointed my parents. I might disappoint my kids. I might I might not ever become as successful as my dad was. I might not ever be that successful. I might not ever be 80. I might not ever get that old. I might, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. I just need to know today that God is my strength. He is my provider. And I'm doing all that he has created me to do as long as I am focused on him and trusting him and putting my faith in him. Because everything is for love anyway. You know, that's why, that's why he forgave us. We're forgiven. We're forgiven of our imperfections. And if you ask and confess that you have done wrong, you will be forgiven in the depth of your soul. You will be forgiven. And I'm getting closer to work, so I'm going to be cutting this off here and I hope that You don't struggle so much today to try to be like anybody, even your friends or whatever. You don't need to you don't need to be just like anybody because you're already made in the image of God. And that means that there is no imperfection in God. 
so the imperfections in you in us those are not even those don't even count with God because those are not those negative things about you about us those, those, those things that we don't like about ourselves we don't know why God designed us the way that he did but if we trust him then we can trust that we're loved we're loved by him You don't have to impress everybody. God's not impressed by all the outward things. He's not impressed by that because he knows that that's not going to save you. And he knows it's not going to stick around. It's not going to be here anyway. Everything that's not of God is going to pass away. Alright? Anything that is not of God is going to pass away. So that means that we... We are not going to perish. With God, our spirit is with God. Even whether in the flesh or whether in the grave, our, our spirit is with God. So, don't struggle so much today. Try to rest in... And just love yourself. Love yourself. Love God for creating you to be the special person and being that you are. Made separate and apart from your parents. You are different than your parents, so you don't have to be like them. You can love them for being your parents. But God never said to worship them. He wants us to worship Him in truth and in spirit. And that doesn't sound like a very hard job. So be safe out there. Enjoy your day. And I hope you get to see some sun today. Bye-bye.